Hello everyone to Geohug. Happy Friday. Uh, so I'm Jess from Prospectors in CoreSafe. Um, so I'm just going to throw you all on mute now. Um, but please use the chat. If you've got questions, please let me know. Um, and we'll send some Rob's way at the end. Uh, but Rob, what an absolute pleasure it is. Thank you so much for coming on to Geohug. Uh, so Rob's the MD of Musgrave Minerals uh, and he's a passionate explorer with a history of discovery of over 30 years. So thank you so much. We're really thrilled to have you here. No worries. Thanks, Jessica. Um, if everyone's comfortable, I'll just share the screen and get underway. Perfect. Really, so a um, bit of a management quote to start with, um, but you've got two, um, Two rigs drilling at Starlight, so new discovery um, out in the Kew region of WA, so we're about eight hours north of Perth. Um, pretty open countryside, running three k's off the highway, um, and looks at some interesting insights. So I've just taken you through uh, standard disclaimers, but really, um, it's about targeting, starting with targeting, working your way through, and commonly we're confined as a junior by capital markets, availability of funding. Um, so, you know, some of the key components are picking a commodity, a region that suits the opportunity in your teams and the expertise. So, um, you know, and obviously the right time in the cycle, um, you know, sometimes it pays to be brave. You know, commodities are cyclical and, you know, you sometimes need to pick at the downturns of the market. You know, they're going to come back. But we looked at about 200 projects really as background uh, before we decided to join Venture into Q. So it's a, it took about a over 12 months period um, and, you yeah, know, eventually started off with a JV and, and eventually got to be in a buyout and get to 100% ownership. Um, and to get that far, you've obviously got to get full buy-in from your board and the team. Um, have a target a system a process. Um, and obviously you have to work within your means. You can't do everything you want to do and you can only pick up certain projects and some things are outside your grasp. Originally, we'd like to have grabbed the Tuckabiana mill that was right next door to the exploration project here, but uh, we couldn't afford it. so. Effectively, we took the exploration ground, left the mill. Um, obviously, had some share price appreciation. Um, obviously, it helps getting some some nice numbers. You know, 14 meters at 190 grams, only four meters below the surface helps. But it also is the right environment to do it. So, we've had some success before. We had a you know intersection of of 10 at 50 um, back in 2017, um, late, and we had a you know, a 15% share price movement over it. But you know, obviously there's the right time in the right place and sentiment is high at the moment. Um, there's other discoveries around, people are making money in the industry and so they're willing to reinvest. Um, and obviously gold is, is going quite strong. Um, well, the other thing that this has really done, the new discovery has done, is created a whole new search space for us. So um, looking at link loads, so across stratigraphy, um, it's the first time we've turned the rig around in this whole belt. First time anyone has over, you know, at least uh, 30 or 40 years of drilling exploration and 100 years of gold exploration. So, uh, just put things in perspective um, as far as obviously it starts with picking up the right ground. Um, and obviously, you can track all a long way. So, high grade um, does make a difference in the yield gun. Um, and obviously having a wide variety of development options um, makes it pretty interesting for us because obviously we want to get to a standalone position, but you know, with what we have, we know it's economic in its own right at the moment. Um, so we can do whatever we want with it really, as far as put it in a processing facility that's close by or, or um, we'll get to the point where we think we can develop it ourselves. Um, just in context, the Starlight Discovery, uh, it cross cuts, as I said, the main um, stratigraphy. So everything's running in a northeasterly direction, um, running up the page to the northeast. Uh, you got Lena deposit out to the, the northwest. Um, the, blue, the orange and red are the starlight loads. Uh, sorry, the, the main break of day loads, twilight and velvet. And then starlight is that purple line, which I've got a black line running along it, which will be the cross section we have a look at. So um, to first, which will be the next step. So what this has done though, it, it, it's really been able to turn the rig around, has, has shown we've got some really high grade in cross-cutting cross -cutting stratigraphy. Um, and then we've made the white light discovery parallel as well. So what this done is shown we can have repetitions within the belt and that's really opened up the whole 28 kilometers for us to, to explore. 
Um, everything we've, we're doing at the moment is outside the resource base. So we're trying to build the resource. So, and from, for context, so we, this is all drilling um, in a, um, a, a northeast to southwest orientation and a southwest to northeast. So um, you can see there, we had the normal twilight and railway lows and we had a bit of a blowout on it. If you look at the cross section on the left hand side. So um, in that respect, we think, well, really it's looking at the geological model and saying, what could this be? It could be a, could be a blowout, this context yet there for a potentially large burden, um, or we could have something that's potentially cross cutting at a, at a high angle. And so, um, if you look at the cross section on the right, we draw some extra extra holes um, and it looked like there was a, a low angle link load, um, but potentially on a, on, a, on, a, on a bit of a steeper orientation. Um, and so what we did again is then from that point forward is turn the rig around and found that not only do you have that link, but it actually continues between the drill lines all the way up to through to surface. Um, a bit difficult to depict in those orientations, but if you if you look at the three A model, so we were looking at that purple line through there, and it was this point here we were looking at where you're having these loads intersect. Um, so I subsequently turned the rig around, and the next two sections we'll look at will be on this orientation, coming through all the way through white light and starlight, which is this load system here, and these are the initial twilight and velvet loads, and you can see all the drilling really is this northeast southwest orientation through the whole, whole belt. So when we look at that, you can see here that, you know, this is perpendicular now to the load system. We have starlight in here, we have white light to the south. And there's really is a, a, a you know, some really nice high grade intercepts here that are really come up very close to surface. So the 77 meters at 13.3 grams, it's made up of three high grade components. You can see there there's eight at 99, there's four at 45 and three at 11 um, spread out, out over that 77 meters. So generally half a gram or so in between. Um, and so in an open cut environment, you could mine the whole lot underground, you stick to the, the high grade components of the load systems. Um, and again, it looks like it's covered by about, about two and a half meters of hard pan. So a typical Murchison transported um, consolidated clays. Um, if we are, uh, if we move through, I can just show you some of the, some of the high grade chips. So out of that 77 meters at 13.3, there was a, a one meter at 500 in that that went you know, about nine to 10 meters down hole. And, and you can see there the, the amount of gold in, in the chips. So, so a lot of gold, uh, very close to surface um, and, and definitely is uh, um, some opportunity there. And around that, you're getting, um, you know, the other seven metres of that interval, um, which was part of that eight at 99, um, was all going about 20 and 30 grams. If we look at the, uh, the long section, you can see it's quite restricted in, in strike, um, roughly about 80 to 120 metres in strike. I'm still open at depth, um, but phenomenal grades. And, and um, what we're seeing um, it's not dissimilar to, to historically what was found at, at uh, Great Fingal and Golden Crown, which is about 30 kilometres to the north of us and found about 1895, that deposit. Um, and that's made up of about six individual deposits to get 2 million ounces at 10 grams. And, but some of the high grade components, the Golden Crown and Great Fingal were you know, half a million ounces over, over a zone that was sort of a couple of hundred metres long and a couple of hundred to 300 metres of depth. So. Um, really high grade stuff. Um, obviously, we've got news flow to come. We've got we've got two rigs drilling at this particular prospect at the moment. We've got another one on the lake drilling under the Evolution Joint Venture. So this ground's 100% Musgrove, but we have some ground with in JV with Evolution, um, and we have a, our fourth rig arriving on site in about a week to test some analogs. We think that look similar to to Starlight up and down the belt. Um, again, just um, some pictures. This is what it really looks like. Um, near surface. So you can see it's not much to see at surface. This ground has been driven over, um, obviously reworked because you've got uh, sumps have been dug and then infilled and, and the like, but you've got about two metres, as I mentioned, two to two and a half metres of hard pan. And that interval, that 14 metres at 191 grams per tonne, um, that's one of the, the rock chips from a, 
from the 2,500 um, gram per tonne interval. Um, and you can see how, uh, how, how much gold is sitting in that. So um, a lot of gold, um, very close to surface means very high margin. So very easy to obviously dig up if you're only a couple of metres below surface. And I think these deposits are generally not large as far as tonnage goes, but they are significant as far as uh, um, profit goes because of the margins you can make. Um, and obviously that's, that's six ounce dirt over a, a 14 metre interval. Um, and then when we talk about these repetitions, you can see as we've stepped to the south, we're hitting the white light load in, in some of the pre-collars and, and the drilling there that runs parallel to starlight. Um, as we step out further to the south, um, we'll see if we can find some additional repetitions to this. Um, but again, uh, white light, light not, as, uh, not as thick at the moment, but the thickness varies along strike as well. So we've, um, and when we talk about repetition, so what we, once we've made the discovery, obviously you go back and look at your data. You come back through, we say, okay, what does it mean? Where is it sitting? What is the context for this discovery? And, and this is the gravity data. So it's a 1VD gravity image. Um, we've collected more detailed data since the discovery. So it's 50 meter sta space station data. Um, and what we're looking for is a density contrast within the rocks to depict the cross cutting shear. Um, and you can potentially see that here with uh, starlight and white light. On this white light load, you can see a nice little break in the gravity. So uh, what we think that's representing, obviously, is a shear, um, destruction of heavy, metal, heavy minerals um, um, and replacement with lighter minerals that are the alteration products, so in the shear zone. And then the load is within that. So we're looking for those type of repetitions within the belt. We think we've got potentially you know, 18 new targets there to test. Um, and we'll systematically test those starting in about a week. So that's the next step for us is, is to find some more deposits like Starlight at the same time as we're drilling it out. Um, something else to, to note that was a, a little bit unusual and, and people had commented, uh, the field guys had commented about it in the field, but um, yeah, until you see it, it's, it is difficult to believe. I mean, beautiful gold tails you can see on the left there, but on the right, we're seeing gold floating in the pan. So it's, it's, it's plate gold and it's just floating on the water. So sometimes when you're panning it, you're actually losing it. It's, 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 it's flying off in the pan. So um, that was a meter at 120 grams. Um, and you can see that, you know, that yellow circle there is a, it, that's a, about a two mil piece of fl uh, flake plate gold that's just floating on the water. Um, and obviously with the density of gold, you'd, you'd think that would be quite unusual. Uh, other part of the project area. So this is starlight down here sitting at break of day and, and near Lena and the green areas are 100% Musgrave. The yellow areas in between are the joint venture with evolution. Um, the areas in the north is with what we call mainland. And the mainland area has a lot of surface uh, um, and near surface gold in the form of nuggets um, and, and gold in quartz. It's quite coarse grain. You can see it through here in the quartz veins. These are rounded, are rounded pebbles in the streams just running off the hill at, at, at mainland. And so we're looking for the source of, of this gold as well. And you can see it here, we found some beautiful coarse gold. That's about six mils in, in length. Um, in fact, it's about 12 mils in length there. Um, that, that nugget within this, um, this um, um, effectively consolidated ironstone um, up at mainland and but lots of nuggets lots of lots of lots in that area to be found and um, prospectors hold that so it was a bit of a, um, um, it was a bit of a um, it was a good idea to, to do a deal in that area um, it was quite innovative um, allowing the prospectors to continue to prospect and mine the top three three meters or so while we uh, looked at the basement and get 100% um, access to the, the basement geology Um, and just a few little touch, touch points and what, what works and what we've seen to work. Um, obviously, knowledge of mineral systems. It helps to see as many rocks as you can um, through your career. Uh, ground selection, if you're not in the right area and you know there's nothing there, you will never find it. It's got to be there to start with. Um, and there's nothing beats what JP Getty said. It's really a, a take on that. Wake early, work hard, strike oil, in our case, gold. Um, persistence, continue. 
but also knowing when to walk away. For us, it was walking away from the central Musgrave region where the company derived its name to a more brownfield opportunity. We thought we would be able to be a bit more successful um, a little bit quicker. Um, and obviously at that stage, when we moved here from in late 2015, early 16, it was a, a poor time for greenfield exploration in the market. And you need funding, so you need to uh, be able to get some results in, in, in the short term. A continuous learning is important and, and really looking at your models. If things don't fit, test something else. Um, um, look and create, create and maintain a high performance team. We've got a very small team, um, but it's mixed discipline um, and everyone has, a, has, an, has ideas and we're happy to share. Um, and one thing I've learned too over my career is associate yourself with smart people. Um, you know, effectively, if, if, if people are smart, they look you, make you look smart. So access and, and integrate all your available data as well. And that's about mixed disciplines and getting everyone to work together in a team. It just improves the probability of success. And, and most explorers know too that you know, if you're the second, third or fourth explorer through a region, you have a higher chance of being successful potentially. Um, and that's really about data. It's about the collection of data, having the data that the first explorers don't have. So you've had that, they've wiggled away, they've worked at areas, they've found that where things are not, and so it limits the opportunity where things might be. Um, really important to get board support. Um, and what we, I think is really important for the industry in the last two or three years to enable a lot of companies to have exploration success over the last 12 months is thinking time. Um, the industry has been a bit down in the last few years. Um, so a lot of geos and geoscience people have had time to think about the targets and prioritize them. So when the funding's come back, they've been able to test these things. And obviously access to funding is critical. Um, and we put about 85% of our dollars in the ground. Um, and obviously you drill holes, you're, you're more likely to find something. Uh, that's really it guys. I'm, I'm just short and sharp, I'm happy to take questions, Jessica, and, and have a pretty relaxed, casual, open conversation. Well, thank you so much. We have had one come through on the chat. Um, what has happened to the Takapiana mill? Is it still available to purchase? Um, uh, no, it's, um, it was purchased by Westgold around three years ago. So uh, at the time, um, it was about 2000 and early 2017, and they only paid $10 million for it. So you'd love to pay 10 million bucks for a mill now. So, but again, yeah, it's timing. So perfect timing for them, not ideal for us. Yeah. Uh, everyone's welcome to jump off mute now then. Um, if you have questions, um, just jump off mute. I'll see who's in the queue or send it through the chat. Uh, uh, Daryl, yep. Daryl Clark here. Um, thanks, Rob. Uh, very instructive talk. I apologize, I missed the first couple of slides. Um, just wondering the with your thoughts on these narrow uh, high grade systems, uh, diamond versus RC versus quality of information versus expiration buck. Um, what's your recommendations on that? Oh, look, if you had the ability, you'd diamond drill every single hole, um, but you don't. So, uh, look, I think um, the other side with high grade gold is you get probably get, you know, 15 times as much sample in RC drilling as you get from a diamond hole because of the, the you know, the the size of the hole, so it's five and a half inch. So you get a really large sample. So with gold variability, the larger the sample, the better. So it actually is a benefit sometimes to do RC for gold exploration. So that's positive, but but what you do lose then is the structural context. So, um, so it's give and take a little bit, but I think yeah, with volume, you definitely get that spread. And so, you know, you, you, can, you can balance out the nugget effect effectively in high grade gold deposits by getting a larger sample. Um, but and on the other side of that too, is the early stage air core is, is generally pretty effective in testing through cover to give you the halo. And we're doing that process on the, on the salt lake on Lake Austin, where we're seeing sort of 20 to hundred meters of cover. And we're getting these very broad halos that are of gold that are maybe 200 meters wide and five kilometers long. And, and it, it does focus you. So, but from there, you need to go to RC or diamond to really define the deposits. And it's that balance again between RC and diamond. And we do, we tend to do both. Yep. 
Any other questions at all? Yeah, Rob, uh, Dave Ward here, mate. Um, mate, uh, great, great work, some excellent results coming out of there. I've been watching it uh, come out in the press and been very impressed. Um, I didn't buy any shares, unfortunately, but um, <laughs> <laughs> next time, eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, so, so the ground that you had in the Musgraves, um, I, I, I quite like that as what, what you were doing there as well, but um, it, it found it a bit hard to get some traction for that one. Yeah, it, it was. And, you know, we had some traction early days. Um, but again, then again, with Greenfield Exploration, it's one of those things that you probably drill um, maybe a tenth of the number of holes you do when you're in sort of a more of a brownfield environment. So you're getting less bang for buck and we're probably only spending 30% of our, 40% of our dollars in drilling in the ground versus 85% now. So you are getting, definitely getting more bang for buck. Um, look, I, the Musgrove I still think is, um, is, is definitely has potential for nickel and copper, but it is probably a longer term, uh, bigger company play as well in general, in my view now, um, you know, you need to, to have deep pockets and, and be committed there. And it's not only just a commitment for geoscience, but it's a commitment to the communities and, and the areas to, uh, to making sure you're progressing all the way through in, in all avenues of, of, of the work. And yeah, because of the, the lack of infrastructure and, um, and the, the help that um, you know, those communities need all the way across the board from education to facilities to, um, to, um, to roads. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a, it's definitely a bigger company play, I would think, in the in the Musgrave region. Yeah, right. You've got some. Uh, have you got some? Some still some work planned in that space? Yeah, we've uh, look, we've got tenure, and what we'd love to do is really um, um, get a big picture partner in there. So uh, you know, uh, uh, a BHP and I was uh, you know, someone else interested and, and take on that tenure and and that commitment. So we've um, effectively at the moment we've. We've reduced our holding. Um, we've got um, a fair few applications in process, and we've dropped some of our granted tenure to reduce our overall commitments in the, on the ground. Sure. Nice to see you, I think um, I think that sort of strategy too just helps with the focus on um, on particular targets and exploration versus a bit of a more of a scatter gun approach. If you have too many projects and too many targets, it's you can tend to lose a little bit of focus. So um, that that's definitely been helpful for us. Um, the other thing that that had, has done actually too, because we did have some ground in the Fraser Range that we divested to legend mining. It's not the ground where they made the Mawson discovery, but when we divested the ground, we picked up shares in legend. And so at the time they were about, uh, 1.4 cents and um, so that that divesting of non-core assets for us has been a, a monetary benefit as well because our, our sort of 150 grand they turned into about three or four million so yeah nice well the um you know if you're considering where your market caps just jumped to recently you know you can start thinking of yourself as a bigger company now rob <laughs> yeah, no, you know exactly you've gone from 50 million market cap to, to 350 in three months so, yeah, you'd be uh, you'd, you'd be uh, some happy happy shareholders. Yeah, absolutely. You still get a range though. <laughs> <laughs> Not all as happy as others. Have you got any comments on um, where to from here in terms of feasibility and metallurgy, those sorts of things? Yeah, so we we um, the met work for um, for Twilight Velvet and Lena. Um, We'd done previously and that was pretty good 96 97 percent recoveries 70 percent gravity component recovery as well so so standard processing um, um starlight we're collecting samples uh right at the moment from the drilling we're doing now to do the met test work on um, we don't expect it to be any different the minerality is the same so um, so we'll collect those though and do the processing met work on those um, as far as um development goes, what we want to do is build the resource base so we can make some decisions around uh, what the size of development we'll put in place is. So that's a, really the stage we're at. It's really make those decisions about about the res on the resource and get build the resource first. Um, but at the same time, we'll try and get all our permitting through, do our baseline environmental work and all that side of things happening in the background. So when we do make those development decisions, we'll, we'll have a bit of a fast track. 
Are there mills in the area for toll treating if you decide to go that way? Look, there are. There's probably, there's definitely, uh, there's about five mills, two are about 40 k's away. Um, the Romilius Mill to the south and the West Gold Takapiana Mill to the north, um, they're only 40 k's, but there are others, um, you know, within another three within uh, 120 k's. Um, so there are opportunities there. Um, look, if you do toll, you, dem you know, you are not in a strong negotiating position to start with. So um, it's not the preferred option. But, you know, with the, the value of the ore and the margins and the grade, um, I think everyone would love to have it because it, well, one of the issues you do have with coal treating high grades is that you can lose some gold in the mill. So it's not lost forever, but it goes to the mill owner and not necessarily the toll uh, supplier. Can I ask what the cost of drilling is for your diamond hole? Uh, yeah, look, um, we have a raw cost of roughly around 180 bucks a metre all in. Um, and then the all in cost, if you include geology time assay, um, a rehab set up, everything else, it's about 300 bucks a metre for diamond. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Rob, uh, Roger Howe, um, happy shareholder. Thank you very much. No worries, Roger. And you, firstly, you do an excellent job uh, with your recording, very clear. Um, great diagrams, great, excellent job. Um, save, to save me the, I haven't done the back of the envelope calculations, but with Starlight, just broadly with the drilling you've done so far, tonnage that you would estimate in the Starlight load, you know, broad brush ounces per vertical meter. Um, I, I guess Roger's too early to call, so we, we don't like making those calls until the resource guys crunch the numbers. I mean, all you do is set yourself up. So that's what their job is. That's, you know, that's what we plan to do. And, you know, we'll pa pass all that data over to them in a month's time and, and get them start crunching it. So, yeah, everyone likes to get a heads up on what it might be. But, and look, we don't, we don't even bother back on the envelope stuff ourselves internally. We just, we just have seen in the past that it's pretty much a waste of time. Um, you have so many variables, including top cuts that are re relying on statistics. And when you've got high grade gold, you've got some samples, you know, yeah. 500 grams over a meter. And we well, had one at two and a half thousand grams over a meter. And you know, yeah. to an average grade, it's really blown out by some of the high grades. So, you know, look, we're, we'd love to get a, you know, a good plus 15 gram resource. Um, and I think we can achieve that easily enough, but um, and very uncertain about ounces and tons. Yeah, understood. Okay. Any uh, other questions? Did you? Uh, Rob, Rob uh, it's Ned, Ned Stoltz here. Um, yeah, hey, Ned. Very impressive. Uh, um bit of work there um can you just uh, drill into what got you into the murchison rather than the, the eastern gold fields what was it a, did you did you see vacant ground did you did you see, where, where where did you really see the opportunity um i i think we found there was more opportunity because it was sort of the second cousin uh with with you know the Eastern Goldfields is sort of the prime real estate for gold in WA and the Murchison is, is quite a prolific historical producer of gold, but it's always seen as second cousin. And so when the industry was down, Murchison was even a little bit further down. So um, that it just meant there was probably a little bit of opportunity there. Um, so so you, you go to a car show, you get hundred people looking around the best car and five looking at the second best car. So still we'd take the second best car any day of the week. Yeah, you know, Rob, Mark Gordon here, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks Mark. Yeah, just a quick question. With your resource, you'd be looking at splitting that into two, wouldn't you? A more bulk uh, mining open cut and then an underground? Yeah, definitely. So. And it's just a matter of the engineers will make that call really around yep. optimization of what, how deep you take the open cart versus underground. Uh -huh, and, okay. and again, you need to have the resource sort of modeled for that to happen. So, but yeah, absolutely, Mark, you'd have a, a, a bulk sort of opportunity potentially at, at open cut and then a defined more high grade opportunity underground. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And finally, how's the uh, how's the chairman? Uh, I, I trust Graham's still the chairman. Yeah, Graham's still chairman. Graham's going well. Yeah. They haven't spoken to him for a while, so. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Any other questions? The only um the only other comment I'd make is um, you know. People talk about discoveries and, and the influence, but it really is a team effort. And without everyone uh, making comment and and having people that sort of uh, actually throw their chips in the ring and are not necessarily conforming is uh, is a great thing to have. So, um, you know, it, it really is a team effort. And and someone might pick that. To, you know, that's where the color of the hole is. But there's a lot of background information that goes into that and, and debate around all these types of things. So. All useful. Yes, thank you so much, Rob. And um, yeah, it was great to have you come on. No worries. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. Have a great weekend, Thanks, everyone. everybody. Cheers. Thanks so much.